think about this. Today, with 50 years of better technology, the farthest that NASA can send an astronaut into space is to the space station, which is one thousandth the distance to the moon. It's only 350 kilometers or 250 miles above the Earth. So just pick a city that's 250 miles from you, make it vertical, and that's as far as they can go into outer space. The moon is a thousand times farther. So what they're claiming is, in 1969, when all of NASA combined had one millionth the computing power of a cell phone, they sent astronauts a thousand times farther into space than they can send them today, 50 years later, with five decades of better technology. We're also really pushing the boundaries in terms of where we're going forward with exploration. I think uh, humans are naturally driven to do this. And this is really the beginning, I think, of human beings leaving low Earth orbit. I certainly plan on being around to see that which is actually claiming that they had better technology, a thousand times better, in the past than in the future. That's scientifically and historically impossible. That proves it in a quarter law. We have Kelly Smith from NASA saying that the radiation belt that surrounds the Earth that most people don't even know exists, a thousand miles above the Earth, 30,000 miles thick, that every manned mission has been well below, except going to the moon, he says the technology to survive the radiation going through it to the moon and through it again back has yet to be invented. We'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. Radiation like this could harm the guidance systems, onboard computers, or other electronics on Orion. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. <laughs> Which means they didn't go to the moon. Of course. And so I'm like, oh, let me call. Yeah. I call up the guy. Let me talk to him. They say, well, he doesn't give interviews anymore since he put his <laughs> foot in his mouth. And I said, well, you sent unmanned probes into that radiation belt recently uh, with two Geiger counters, obviously, to measure the radiation, which you yeah. should have already had the radiation results from you know, 50 years ago from six tips through it to the moon and back. And I said, well, what are those Geiger counter readings? It's a, you know, government funded project, non-military civilian. Uh, what are the Geiger counter readings? It says it's a classified secret. I'm like, well, wait a minute. When you send a probe to the sun to find out the temperature of the sun, the temperature of the sun isn't a secret. It's just nature. Mm. And when you send a probe to Jupiter to find out how much helium is in Jupiter's atmosphere, the amount of helium isn't secret, it's just nature. So why would the amount of radiation that surrounds the Earth in this 30,000 mile thick field that most people don't even know exists that you have to go through to reach the moon, why would that be a secret? It's just a part of nature. And they said no comment. Well, because it proves it's 100 times beyond a lethal dose and they do not have yet the protection to go through it. As their own engineer admitted, the technology necessary to survive a trip to the moon and back has yet to be invented. Uh, the plan that NASA has is to build a rocket called SLS, which is a heavy lift rocket. It's something that is that is much bigger than what we have today, and it will be able to launch the Orion capsule with humans on board, as well as uh, landers or other uh, components to, be, to destinations beyond Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. We only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to, and we're building these building block components in order to allow us to do that eventually.